The Citizen Bike Show. News. Commentary. Interviews. Citizen Mike Show starts now. Welcome to the Citizen Mike Show. Thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate it. My name is Mike Burdinsky. Ralph Tomaselli, the editor of the Record Journal, has the night off. In the studio tonight, our special guest is Chris Shortell, the town councilor, Chris Shortell. Thanks for coming back on the Citizen Mike Show. Thanks for having me. Well, very adventurous of you, so we, we appreciate well, that. Not a, remember the last time I was on? Um, like a, yeah, go ahead. 13 okay. months ago, oh, on the eve of the election, it yeah. was Shortell in the lion's den of progressivism between Brodinsky and Jamie Hine. <laughs> I was fending you both off. So. Oh, you loved it. I, yeah, I you, did. You I did. loved it. A lot to get into tonight, and um, it's sort of a complicated show because we have a lot of visuals, video clips, and, and images to put up on the screen. Um, the story I want to lead off with, though, is the story about the Board of Education getting a report from consultants on its um, school facility utilization study. Uh, I want to start off with a couple of sentences from the Record Journal to sort of set the table, and then, we'll, and then we'll get to you, make sure everyone's on the same page, factually speaking. This goes back to May 9. Um, in the Record Journal, the Board of Education is seeking bids for a study looking at possible changes to the town's middle and high schools. Uh, a consultant will be hired to complete a school capacity and restructuring study that will act as a roadmap for education advancement in the district in coming years, according to the request for proposals prepared by the school district. School Superintendent Sal Menzo said the consultant will offer recommendations about future programming and curriculum, as well as determine what would be the best building structure for those services. Um, the board's decision to do this study, which is budgeted to cost 60000 was driven by declining enrollment and improvements needed at the schools, Menzo said. Well, uh, a, a consultant was selected. They uh, compiled a report. They offered this report at a meeting a couple of weeks ago on November 5. We're going to get to that in a minute. But before all that, Christopher K. Shortell brought up this issue at a uh, budget hearing. I think it was April 26. Uh, Bruce, we have that first video. Let's show that and get Chris on the screen and ask him what he was thinking when he made the three, two, one, hit it. I think, you know, there's this notion if we spend $200 million on a new building and can put everyone in the building, it's somehow going to save money like 50 years later. I mean, I think enrollment would have to drop a lot because 80% of every budget, not just yours, is salary and benefits. So you save a little on heating. You save, maybe you go to one sports team, so you save a little bit. But I don't see where you save all this money unless enrollment plummets. But you yeah, could I, I think, well, I think I'm, I'm not going to weigh in on that part, but I think that the part that I would weigh in on is that the study is going to tell us what we need to do for our facilities, no matter what configuration they are. Right. So that goes right. back into uh, Councillor Morgenstein's comments about, and also Z Councillor Zander's comments about capital and how that cost then, you know, gets translated to other taxpayers in our community. Um, because we do have buildings Right now, we're waiting to do something at Sheehan. We're waiting. Um, there's a lot of code, uh, code updates that have to occur. You know, we talk about the bathrooms in senior court. That's a famous conversation in our board meetings. But in order to actually do something with those bathrooms, you have to you knock down one wall, which affects another wall, which affects another wall. We're talking about probably a $3 million project just on that area because of the way that it has been set up and the way it was built. So. This study is more than just, do we go to one high school, go to two high schools, two middle schools, one middle school, do we go whatever. 
it, it's about what is the future that we need to share with you. And technically, it, it was part of the plan of um, conservation and development's um, findings that there was supposed to be a study. So we just, to be honest, we didn't want to wait. Uh, we just figured we'll take the bull by the horns and, and, and get this study undergone, uh, or and undertaken rather, undergone, undertaken, um, so that we can move forward with some recommendations uh, from an outside voice. Uh, one more, that, that sounds great. <laughs> it, it's a unicorn, but you keep, you keep, you keep chasing that unicorn. And unicorn, you used the U word. What was going on in your mind then, or what happened? Well, I think that, like I said, I mean, any effort to save money anywhere has to start with your people costs. That's just 101. Uh, going to one building, you know, those types of things, that saves you money, absolutely, but not long term. So I'm just looking, I was, that's how I was looking at it, was futuristically, um, how do we save money? Now, I understand Dr. Menzo's point in the sense that there still has to be a path forward educationally. What's, they're always changing sort of their methodology and what's sort of how they do things. So I get maybe his point was that maybe the, and we'll get into this later, the future direction in terms of STEM or arts. But at the end of the day, uh, I, I, I feel like, and this is maybe, maybe I'm a caveman. I'll use, I use that term. My view of, of the situation is when enrollment gets to the point where the two schools are half full, you pick a school and you, you put everyone in it and then you upgrade that school. That's how I was always looking at it. So that, that was where I was coming from. Well, are you in a different place now? You have the benefit no. of no, no, I'm no, I'm exactly where I, I'm a caveman. I'm exactly where I was on April 28th. So based on everything that's happened, that's come to your attention, the case has not been made for $50 million, $100 million expenditures and the, everything in between. I haven't, well, I, I mean, I didn't go to the meeting Yeah. and we can talk about why I didn't go, but, but I, I mean, the board of ed has not, the, is, all that's happened is the, a commission that cost or a study was commissioned for $60,000 and they have reported out to the Board of Ed one time. I know there was an instructional committee meeting, I think last week maybe to follow that up, but, but that's all, I, we as a counselor, I haven't seen anything yet. So I'm not gonna weigh in until I, you know. A couple of thoughts on this report. video clip that we, uh, that we played. Mm -hmm. um, the point you were raising is, how the heck do you save money under these circumstances? The first response from Sal Menzo was, oh, I don't wanna weigh in on that. <laughs> I don't want to weigh in on saving money, uh, which leads to the inference which we're going to develop over the next half hour, maybe, that this is not about saving money. This is really, this whole study, the plan, the approach by the Board of Ed and the superintendent's office is not to save money. It is to spend money. It is to spend money on, on upgrades um, for, whatever, for whatever reason. Um, the other um, point that occurred to me is he said, well, we can move forward uh, based on their recommendations on a of an outside voice. And I said, whoa, wait a minute, let me talk to Chris Chartel when he comes on the show about this outside voice thing and why we would, we would be led around by an outside voice. I, I, just what are your thoughts on that? Well, you could, I, I think in that same meeting, it may be, the, it may be the same meeting. There was a meeting last spring or year where I said, I, I challenged this notion, why are we spending 60 grand? on a commission, Sal could draw up a plan in the back of a napkin. Sal, I mean, Sal's brilliant. And, and Sal could draw that, Dr. Menzo could draw that up in two seconds. Um, so I, I think that, I, I, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why, but I think that, that if you get an outside voice, an outside commission, it's easy then, I think, to steer, steer criticism to the commission. And it, it makes it sort of more objective. To the consultants. To the consultants. To yep. the consultants. And, and, and again, I understand the consultants, this is what they do. So there's value. Um, you know, I, I mean, I work in a, at a Fortune 50 company. Uh, we hire consultants all the time. And, and some of them are better than others. And, and you know, but at the end of the day, I, I, I've never seen, I, you spend more time coaching the consultant on how you do business. <laughs> And that, I don't know how much of the cost that, that affects because you, so I mean, again, I would have preferred that they do a retreat. That, that the central office do, do, a, do a, a weekend retreat or do a week retreat in, the, in July uh, and, and come up with a plan and, and let's debate the plan. But they chose to, to spend $60,000, which is not a lot. In the grand scheme of it, in a $100 million budget, I guess that's not a lot of money. Oh, but this I, is just the beginning. Well, this is the foot in the door. Yeah. Uh, let me go back to this article I read because I, I, I want to focus on a sentence. School superintendent Sal Menzo said the consultant let me back up before I reread that. 
I watched the meeting on, uh, on, you know, the video of the meeting, and I watched it kind of more than once because in order to make these clips that I put together um, for our viewers, kind of had to go over it and replay it and, and, you know, skip ahead and back up and trying to fit the pieces of the puzzle together. So I, I watched the, you know, the meeting more than, more than once. So I'm somewhat familiar with what happened and what didn't happen, but I, I'll, I'll be corrected if, you know, if, if I'm wrong on something. But um, school superintendent Sal Mento said the consultant will offer recommendations about future programming and curriculum. The consultant has not done that. At that meeting, they did not do that. So the way I look at it, they have not fulfilled their part of the contract their part of the bargain. Now, there's a long way to go. The consultants are going to hold more meetings. I don't know how many they can hold for 60,000, but at some point they're going to wrap this up or else they're going to lose money. But the consultant did not offer recommendations. Instead, the consultant put forth alternatives, which is not the same as making a recommendation. And then the consultant, who was unaccountable, unaccountable to, to anybody, they have a short-term short gig here, they're going to determine um, curriculum. We have superintendents and assistant superintendents and staff and administrators, and I don't know why we farm out our, the curriculum of the future to a consultant. It boggles my mind, but I just want to know if you're as baffled as I am. I, I didn't go to the meeting, so I did not, and nor did I watch it. Yeah. I mean, I read the report. But I mean, I will freely come into this discussion telling you my knowledge of this is based on the report and some quick conversations with a few Board of Ed members. As far as your point about they didn't make a recommendation around curriculum, I think though a couple or, of their- Or, 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 or buildings. Our, I, think, I think a couple yeah. of their options though were about reconfiguring the high schools to have like a STEM path and an arts and language path, almost like more like magnet schools. So I don't, maybe that counts, maybe that's what that would qualify. I don't know. I'm just wondering if that's, where they would say, no, we did. See, that was part of our, our thing. The other thing I'll say, in, in their defense, in, in the Board of Ed's defense, yep. uh, as far as outsourcing curriculum, you know, one of the things, I, I, you know, as a Republican, because I'm a Republican counselor, uh, we're Republicans, we love the private sector. We just adore the private sector. That's the hallmark. Everything is, the private sector is the best. And that's what we do in the private sector. We, we as I just said, we pay consultants to tell us stuff. But I, I will, I will, seriously say, I'm never going to fault the Board of Ed for getting an outside perspective, because I think it's so easy for, for us on the right to criticize the education establishment for not doing that and being too insulated. So, um, but, but I didn't watch the meeting, so I don't want to get to, you saw, you watched the meeting many times. And so, so. let me give you um, the Burdinsky 101 on consultants. Okay, oh, this All is right. good. It's All a right. philosophical discussion, yep. and I, you know, just purely philosophical. Yep. Um, as you know, in my prior life, I was a trial attorney, litigation, right? Yeah. And so often, so many cases end up at, in, in the battle of the experts. Mm. So if you have a cause to advocate for, you have a case, you have a client, and you have to earn a fee and, and prove something to a judge or a jury, many often, many, many times you, you, you need the services of a consultant to act, uh, uh, to be on your side to persuade. The other side does that too. And in many cases, you can get a consultant or an expert witness to take any side that you're willing to pay for. They're, they're not quite that, that bad, but I'm, nor am I exaggerating too much. It's not too much of a rhetorical flourish. Trial attorneys know this. If you need, a, you need an expert that, you know, is good for plaintiffs on trip and falls, you'd kind of know who to go to and so on and so forth. So as a trial attorney, um, I... It gained a healthy skepticism for consultants and so-called experts. And I think maybe the safest working model when you hear, see their reports or hear them talk is look for some sort of a built-in bias. Mm. And I think in this case, and we got some video clips, which I think um, are the breadcrumbs that lead to that reasonable conclusion of a built-in bias. I think it's, we, we, can, we can talk about that when the clips come. I'm, I, 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 I suspect the case can be made in this case for built-in bias, and you say, well, why? Well, and here's plausibly why there could be built-in bias. It may be that the consultants in this case are trying to make the case they know their client wants to be made. This would be the Board of Ed in Salmenzo. They want a, you know, new buildings and $200 million 
spent. Um, if the consultant suspects that or knows that explicitly, you know, the, the consultant may not put on a case that disturbs or conflicts with their client's cause. It's just not going to happen. Mm. Uh, that, that could be one. Um, the other thing is this industry of consultants and engineers and architects cannot make money by not doing projects. In mm. order to make money and survive and, and pay the bills of your consulting firm, there has to be big projects. So it may be that a built-in bias of consultants and experts, do a project, do a project. And maybe that's, you know, that's, what, um, that's what's going on uh, in part. And another contributory cause, and I'm going to ask you for this, should we, be, should we have our antennae up for the position that maybe these consultants sense that they could have a dog in the fight? If there's a $200 million project, did it ever occur to them they may have a piece of that? I don't know. Come I mean, I, I don't know. I look, everything you're saying, you serious? everything you're saying, it, it could be. Everything <laughs> you're saying, though, jives with every John Grisham novel I've read. And so I, I'm not a lawyer, but, I, but that's about the consultants. You can get a consultant to say anything, and, and that, that makes sense. And sure, it, it's a self-perpetuating thing, like you said. You, you, you get these, you advocate for these projects, and then they go out to bid, and lo and behold, you're there ready to, to bid on them. There's only so many consultants that can bid on them. So I'm, I was just trying to play devil's advocate here, but okay. I clearly struck a nerve. <laughs> I did not know you felt this strongly about, this is, I'm going to store this Well, there's this enough one. soft spots in this presentation and, and the, the procedure. <laughs> right. is there, what is going on here? Right. I mean, I, that, I said, okay. And the, and the more I looked, I, the more, I, more appalled I became. I, uh, I, I know, I, I got to, yeah. I mean, I think, could I, I, the other thing though, I would say to your point yeah. about, you know, and it, 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 almost like the outcome was predetermined uh, of the of these recommendations, I, I I do want to you know, I mean, and we'll get into this about you know my, I'm not really in favor of most of these alternatives, but when you get elected to these offices, whether it's council or board of ed, you want to do something, you want to make things better, and you have, and most of us, I think, I think all of us have this urge to to take action, and especially those of us that work in the private sector, because that's how we are, that's how we get things done every day, and then you get into the you know government, and as you know. There's so much that you can't do for a variety of reasons. You're handcuffed on so many things, and there's just you know it's not in the charter. We it's not it's not in our power to do X, Y, or Z as a counselor or as a board of ed member. So I, I think you know I'm not going to fault anyone for having a bias for action or a bias uh, for strategic fo and forward thinking. I think it's fa it's a fascinating study. It's a fascinating six options. I just think they're completely unrealistic and expensive, and but. I'm not going to fault the, I think the, their spirit is in the right place in terms of thinking outside the box. Because again, there's a lot of situations elsewhere in town where we're critical of, of the administration for not thinking outside the box and gloom and doom. So this is certainly the opposite. I'm trying my best here, Mike. I'm trying Boy, to put sure another, are. I'm okay, just trying to give you an alternative. Yeah. Um, not, not selling you, am I? So the, okay. um, the presentation um, took like an hour and a half or hour okay. 40 minutes, whatever it really was. And I've taken maybe just a few minutes of clips, so uh, I admit there is some uh, a lot of editorial judgment as to what clip I'm going to I'm going to take. I think we have um, the six or seven of those clips. Each one is worthy of some sort of discussion between you and I as to what it shows and what it doesn't show. Um, and um, on the last show, when Ralph and I were talking about this, I was. Um, I objected uh, very strongly to um, the superintendent's decision to withhold the report from the Board of Ed and the public until, after, until the Board of Ed walked into the meeting. He could have distributed that report to the Board of Ed days before the meeting so they would have a chance to study it, think about it, think up questions, think up their approach, do their independent research. That was a choice that the superintendent made. He could have given it to them in advance. He decided to give it to them as they walked in the door. Okay. That is the first breadcrumb of someone who is trying to steer a discussion in a certain way, catch them unprepared, catch them off guard, and maybe they're e it's easier to have them go in the direction that you want. A harsh assessment on my part, but tell me I'm wrong and tell me why. I feel okay. Like, I feel like I'm on the stand. No, I just I, a, I'm. It was I'm easier when I had Jamie Hine here I, trying to spend the surplus just, down. Oh it, man, it was, sorry, I, Jamie. I was shocked. I mean, I you know. Okay. Bruce, we have the next clip, and um, in this in this clip, 
the consultants are going over the said supposed need for these options. Um, the cheapest one was about 17 million. We'll get into that. That was rejected uh, rather rapidly by the Board of Ed, and the most expensive was over 100 million. Um, and that would be the town's share. So the total cost of that project would be in the $200 million range. But they went over the, um, the, the so-called said supposed need. As you watch this clip, watch for generalizations, uh, jargon, and phrases that don't really mean much as we count down to this one, Bruce. Three, two, one, go. Um, we know that your buildings are over, about 50 years old or over. The infrastructure of them is aging. They haven't seen as many renovations, and the classrooms just aren't as flexible for today's teaching styles. Um, additionally, grants have been turned away because the space is not adequate in the existing buildings to support them. HVAC is another issue that comes up with older schools. Um, improvements to that needs to be made. Security concerns. Um, a lot of um, security updates that are recommended aren't imp implemented in the schools yet. Um, there's also inequities between the PE departments and um, the strategic plan we have identifies over 15 million dollars of maintenance and minor improvements but those also don't address the programming issues that we'll get into any thoughts on that before I offer you mine well that's that's a veritable buffet of hot buttons so so that one is let's just let's walk through that because I, I thought this when I watched the clip when we were preparing for the show Depending on who you are, that clip is for you. So if you're an academic, if you're a teacher, maybe you teach in a different town, but you live in Wallingford, you're going to hone in on that the classrooms, are they, they're not 21st century classrooms. If you're a fiscal conservative out there, you're going to hone in on, oh, we're not getting grant money? Why aren't we getting grant money? Um, if you're a parent and you're hearing HVHC, which really is air conditioning, you're going to hone in on that one. Uh, if you're anybody, you're going to hone in on the school security one. We're going we're gonna to play, and that's kind of neatly sort of, security to me is the most important issue of all, and that's neatly buried in, in that. Uh, who doesn't care about security, especially with all the, everything going on in the world? Um, and, then, and then we hit the inequities between the two schools, and that's going to hit your East versus West Siders and unite them. They see, it's, is it really fair that you can't get this at Sheen or this at Lyman Hall? So th th my reaction was, was th there's a little nugget there for anyone in the audience, but my other reaction was, if the, which really does uh, s strike a note with me, there's, she said that there are security measures they have not implemented. I don't understand why, because we are at the council. I cannot imagine we wouldn't be funding. Come to the council, come next week or whenever, put it on the agenda and let's talk about it and let's, let's give you what you need. Because we've, I know that before I was even involved in all this, they did it after Sandy Hook in, 2013, in late 2012 or early, early 2013. Uh, it, it's come up in every budget cycle. They've made, you know, now we have SROs to a certain extent. Um, with Chief Wright. So, I mean, I, that one really, there's no excuse that why security needs aren't being met. And if they, and, and I'm sorry, they need to come to the council on that one. That shouldn't take a reconfiguration study as, as a reason to, to bring that one out. So that, they, those are my reactions to, uh, to that, that clip. Um, just by way of background, and, and yeah. uh, maybe I'm, I'm a little late in getting some of these details in, these alternatives that the consultants put in front of the Board of Education ran in cost, and this would be the town share, and, they, and, they, and the actual gross cost would be perhaps double or, mm -hmm. or almost double. Um, uh, 15.6 million uh, was the cheapest, and 117.2 million, just the town share, would be the most expensive. So we're not talking chump change right. here. Okay. Um, let me go back to my, my impressions. They said, well, you know, the costumes are not conducive to 21st century teaching methods. <gasps> Oh my God, oh my God. I mean, uh, I don't know what that means. I don't know what they can explain what it means. I don't know how many classrooms that, are, that our students are getting shortchanged in because they're not conducive to 21st century. You know, I don't know what that means. It was empty language to me. Flexible uh, spaces in buildings, they better flesh that out. I don't know what that means, uh, a flexible space. Certainly a classroom that you, you can use for teaching history, you can teach French in it too. So. I don't know, uh, inequities across schools and spaces and opportunities. What, what inequity, specifically, what are you talking about? And is it worth a $117 million solution? Um, let's define it, let's list them, and let's see how serious they are. No, instead we have generalities that press buttons. Uh, and, you know, gender inequality, that's another one of these um, things. And then... Mm. They, they mentioned very vaguely that the district has been turned away from grants. 
I don't know what grants. I don't know if they can document that. I don't know if that's a, um, a push to panic or, or, you know, to get emotional. I, I don't know what that means, but it needs to be specific and documented. You have something on your mind. I can, no, I, 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 there's a, in our budget packet, uh, yeah. every year we get a really nice presentation from Sal and the Board of Ed, and one of the pages talks about not the money. They raise a lot of money. They, they've sold curriculum overseas. Yeah. They do an awesome job, and, and they also they do get a lot of grants. So I'm sure there's some they aren't, I'm sure there's more they want to get, but they've, there's some number, and I don't have it, but mm -hmm. they've gotten – a lot of grants. I mean, they brag about it as they should right. in their budget. On, it, when since Sal's been superintendent, they've gotten millions of dollars in grants. So, and just another generality. And the reason I'm spending so much time on this is this is the case. These two, this right. clip and the next clip, is the case for spending millions and millions of dollars. Right. So, if you're not impressed by this list of reasons, then then these proposals by the consultants um, should be done on arrival. Um, there's something called current programming, programming initiatives. Someone can flesh that out. I don't know why a consultant is doing it. That's the job of the superintendent of schools. He's accountable. He needs to have his fingerprints on this um, rather than a consultant who just may be on a short-time gig. I, I, I don't know. But it's these vague reasons without detail that, that are worrisome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bruce, let's play that second one. Um, and here, as you watch this, again, look for general vague, vague language without specifics. And this is the second half of the case made by the consultants for spending tens of millions of dollars. Three, two, one, go. So just to define sort of the objective of the restructuring study itself, as well as the alternatives, this is kind of boiling down what we see as our findings, that you have projected continued enrollment decline. Um, you're maintaining four aging buildings that have needs in a time of tight budgetary constraints. There's an inability to expand some programming that it's not for lack of um, desire or, or student interest, but from space concerns, um, as well as a concern over equitable access to programming. Your buildings were of a vintage that um, you know, we're not designed for um, today's standards of security. And then finally, your nearby neighboring communities are investing in their schools, and there is a relationship between real estate value and the school system and economic development and a school system. So to stand out in your region, um, your peers may be outpacing you with the investments. So the question really is, how can Wallingford efficiently deliver quality 21st educational programming for all students? So, <laughs> by spending $100 million. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, yeah. I love this because the it's, it, it's, they, they, they reiterate all the same arguments. And they hit you with, the, 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 with I, what I call the Meriden bullet. That last bullet's the Meriden bullet. Uh, nearby communities investing in schools, meaning when anyone in Yalesville who drives the back way to the mall, see all those brand new schools? How come Meriden gets those? And so if you weren't sold by all the other arguments, we're not as good as Meriden. Do you buy it? No, I'm just, I think it's funny. I think it's, I think it's, I, actually, I think it's brilliant. Let's push every button. So. We got a third clip uh, or another, yeah, the next clip. And let's, um, let's go to that. And this is a, maybe I'm reading, no, I don't think I am reading too much into it. Um, what was presented to the board the night of this meeting were six options ranging, you know, from uh, more than, more than, uh, 15 million to 117 million, and they're supposed to digest this this report um, and not ask policy questions, but only ask certain kinds of questions. And I think it's evidence of a way of controlling the discussion. It should be a free ranging discussion. The consultant should say, you know, we're here. The parents are here. Give us your best question. Just let's open it up for discussion because we're on the cusp of spending over $100 million. So let's have your question. Uh, does that happen? No. You can only ask technical questions. Bruce, let's, put, let's get that up. Three, two, one, go. But before we do a little interactive with the public, we'd like to see if the board has any questions on the technical pieces of this. We'd like to see if the board has any questions Questions on the technical pieces of this? Just, just questions on technical. 
Hopkins, you know, where I she said it. where yeah. she said technical. Um, your reaction, and then I have some reactions. Um, I have a question. I'm going to react yeah. to a question. Sure. Did you you watch it again? I didn't watch it, which I'm going to get criticized for because I'm talking about it. Uh, how many people were in the room? Do we know? Because the Record Journal article didn't say. Yeah, I thought there were a lot of people. I mean, I, I wow, rough guess, 150. Okay, I so mean, that's I, good. I, so it's a good turnout. A lot of those probably would have been staff, you know. Yeah, um, but, yeah. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, but I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think though, doesn't uh, Aaron Corso, who's the chair of that committee, right. I believe she does say it. What she does push back at some point. Uh, again, the rec I'm going by the Record Journal article that, that yeah. she pushed back and said we need time to look at this. I know they eliminated option one, which I, mean, I think you're gonna. We'll, well get to, but I, I thought I felt like, but I agree. I mean, I think she felt the same way that they needed to time to digest it. Uh, well, but the board was certainly compliant and only asking technical questions and, uh, yeah. you know, those that they could make up on the fly without having the benefit of this report. Right. Um, so, you know, one of the, one of the questions they should have gotten into and not be limited by instructions from the consultant, don't ask policy questions, you know, right. was, um, well, Superintendent Menzo, what's your recommendation and why? Let's get to that. What's the data and what's the research that backs up each of these alternatives? What's the data and the research that backs up themed schools? And how do we know that themed schools will lead to greater student achievement? Where's the research? Where's the, I mean, you got a consultant, they do this for a living. This probably isn't the first time they've done this kind of a presentation. So there's no data. Um, the superintendent is totally unaccountable for this. The superintendent Salmenzo has got his hands off and letting the, the consultant uh, run of it, run with it. There's no benefit analysis, just 21st century teaching uh, 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 methods. So it was too controlled, and it, it was like the, another way of manipulating, I think, uh, public opinion and the Board of Education, and they rolled over for this technical question instruction. Um, we got some more video clips, but your reaction to my reaction. I don't know where to start. I haven't seen you yeah. this fired up since the mayor's 2016 I audit, I was since the letter. By, by, you are fired up, I so am. I'm just going to... And, I'm just and gonna, I don't mind being fired no, up. No, I feel... Know, absolutely. Ralph, you're mind. missing out. Yeah. Um, we, got, we got the next um, clip, Bruce, the fourth one. Let's, let's roll that. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, really, once we get narrowed down to the final three options, the goal and of the recommendations are going to be what are those action steps necessary and what are some of the major considerations behind it. I know when we jump ahead and we say look at converting um, DAG to central office. Well, before that conversion occurs, that's potential swing, that's space, swing space right there because yeah. going through the utilization, we saw where we have bits and pieces of space throughout the system. We would look to be able to use that most effectively in the least disruptive manner to not have to go to costly portables. The key language was the very first phrase. Once we get down to th final three options, the consultant, if they had their way, would have had that happened, happen at that meeting. He, he, they were pushing to get three options that night. I mean, those are $50 million swings, $30 million swings, making value judgments over themed high schools and pathway curricula. That, you know, that's what he wanted to do. And the impression I got, he was pushing and pushing too hard. And this was a, you know, a, an attempt to railroad it. And that's the third breadcrumb towards a built-in bias. Let's get this out. Let's get it done within my $60,000 retainer. Uh, you know, let's, let's, let's move this along. Another approach would have been each one of these options, ladies and gentlemen, maybe deserves a full meeting mm -hmm. because they're serious choices to be made. And the pros and cons of each option should be the subject of an executive summary with appendixes, again, with data, research, cost analysis. But oh no, eliminate three. You know, well, they, um, they did agree to put it over to December 10. I don't know what's going to happen to on, 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 that, on that night, but your thoughts on my thoughts. I, I mean, you're right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is a quite a quick process when you're dealing with the dollars you're dealing with. Yeah. It's very, it's very quick. Um, uh, so I, it, it's a little baffling. Um, it's a little shocking why it had to go so quick. Why, why, why the urgency? Bruce, we got the, the, the next one. Let's, let's roll that. Three, two, one, go.
Um, along those lines, I'm really not in favor of status quo. I mean, I'm not ready to make a decision, but I do have a question. Sometimes um, we use a Google Doc where we can put questions forward so that they can look at some, some of our questions and then maybe have them ready for the next time we meet. Is that an option to do? What we're going to do is um, I'm going to get an email that you could directly send it to them. I'm not going to be the go-between. Um, so it's going to go directly, like everything else, is going to go directly to the consultants. Um, so that'll, I'll get that for you, and the only thing I will do is send out the email to all of you, and then I'll let you send it directly to them. Thank you. You I would eliminate the status quo, yes. I, I, clearly, something needs to be done with our buildings. I'm not in favor of status quo. Um, but is anybody else willing to go ahead and eliminate alternative one, the status quo? Yes, yes I'm ready. I am. Yeah, I feel comfortable. I could read, I could reduce yes. that one. So we eliminated status quo. $17.1 million, poof. Now, the irony is the relabeling, the relabeling of a plan which once was called the strategic plan. The strategic plan, once upon a time, as early as the spring of this year, the Board of Ed strategic plan was the embodiment of their goals, their aspirations, the measures and steps and the money they wanted to spend to get the school district forward uh, to education of the future, the 21st century education. That was their strategic plan. That's been relabeled by the consultant as status quo. Before, you know, the spring, before the consultant popped his report, the status quo was called the sustained budget, yeah? The sustained budget was presented as, well, you know, this is what we need to, to sort of tread water. The strategic plan was what we need to move things ahead. But now, the strategic plan has been relabeled status quo, and the Board of Ed is treating it like dog poop. Dog poop. Your <laughs> wow. Thoughts? Dog poop. This is the best citizen Dog Mike poop. ever. I, this is going to be did high, you see it? the I mean, highest rated citizen Mike did ever. Did you see how they reacted to so, their strategic plan? Well, my first reaction Dog poop. before I, when I saw the clip, I, I didn't realize you edited it. I'm like, wow, Patty Purcell is out of order. Tammy's talking and Patty's jumping in. And I realized you edited it. So I, I was glad to see that the board. Yeah, they were in each speech. I know, I know, I know. Clip. Let yeah. me, um, I don't disagree, but let me just offer uh, maybe a counter counterpoint. Good. You're, and I don't disagree with what you're saying. From a labeling perspective, you're absolutely right. You, they go into every budget cycle with sustained services versus strategic, and, and then now in this context, the strategic has become the sustained, basically, is what you're saying. Agreed. But here's, let me just, in their defense as far as them dropping it, even though I don't agree with them dropping it, there are six alternatives that are on the table that night, like you've pointed out. But only five of them are new, are new to the board. They know all about alternative one, because that's, as, as you just pointed out, that's what they've lived. All of those board members, they're very familiar with the status quo, with, all, with, with their strategic plan. So, so I, while I don't agree with it, it's not like they have to go home that night and read up. Alternative one is not created equally to the other six in terms of how familiar they are with it. They know that, they should know that well, you know, especially Roxanne and Mike Votto and, and Patrick and, and Karen, people that have been on the board for a long time. So I, I, I don't, when we say, oh, they just dismissed alternative one, or option one, they know that option very well. And for better or for worse, they felt something had to be done. I don't agree with it. I think it's a lot of, I, but I, I understand why they probably felt like they could do, that, do it that night. Uh, now, beyond that, no. Could, could, could they that night pick between option three and option five or option six or option two? Or That's crazy in one night. Absolutely crazy. So, so the rest of it, I don't know why the consultant would ask that of them. But option one, that's the one they know and they think it has to change. Well, that's the one they know, and that's the one they've embraced year after year after year as, as early as this year during budget. That was their sustained, aspirational, I, know. I wish we could get this, yeah. and then four or five months later, as I say, it's suddenly dog poop, <laughs> and, and, they, and they don't want anything to do with it. And that includes the security upgrades. If you saw on that slide, that, yeah. that was my slide, yeah. um, and I'm getting that from the documents. I, I, didn't, I didn't, you know, pull, I didn't make Part of it, up. can I just, you know, yeah. part of it, just, just, just to the, they have have over the last few years they've run some pretty high surpluses 
and they've actually paid. I mean, if you look at their strategic plan, if you can, when I was on the board in 2014 versus now, so about four years, four and a half years later, uh, because of, of, of the surpluses they've run, they've been able to pay down and buy a lot of those one-time things. That plan, that strategic plan has shrunk a lot, not completely, but I think it's not, my recollection is it's significantly less than it was four or five years ago. But so, I'm not sure your point. Well, just that it's smaller. I don't. So when you say they're just treating it like dog, well, they. My point is, seventeen million dollars. I know, I know, but I think they've executed on a lot of it already. So it's not a good number. You're saying that's not a good. No, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just pointing out that they've, they've, they've executed on it a lot. Now I don't know what to think. Um, All right. I want to um, get a little more detail in about what these alternatives are because we've sort of glossed over that, Mm -hmm. and we cannot devote much time on this particular show to detailing what those options are, but I can list the price. Sure. And this is supposed to be the town share based on an optimistic state reimbursement rate. The consultant said at the meeting, this is the maximum rate, and I don't think it's the probable rate. And, the pro- and no one asked, is this the probable rate, the foreseeable rate, or is this the, right. ma- and you know, they just said again, it's the maximum rate, but renovated high school, 77.7 million. So the price would be much higher than that. If we just mm. assume a, um, easy math, a 50%, 50% reimbursement rate, they said 53.4, I think. But our share would be 77 point million. Um, something called Pathways, education, somebody knows what that is, but it was never fleshed out. That's a $117.2 million option. And that's, again, just the town share. Um, the, the alternative uh, four um, it has to do with a, uh, um, one of the schools being turned into the central office. That's a mere 114.4 million. Uh, themed high schools and one middle school is 101 million dollars. And alternative six is one high school and one middle school. That's about 59.1 million dollars. And there's, you know, other details which we don't have time to go into. Um, but the cheapest one, they no, we don't want the the uh, the cheapest one. Um, the mayor was at this meeting, and he went to the microphone, and I think it's a very revealing uh, moment, and it's another major breadcrumb in, in, towards my conclusion that there's some sort of a bias in this, in this report. Bruce, let's watch the mayor's uh, clip. Three, two, one, go. Seconds in 112 Creep Road. I'm just curious about your savings figures. Do you include uh, the increased principal and interest payments that would extend out 30 years? No, we only looked at operational costs. We didn't look at what the um, what would be bonded, what would be the interest on that. Um, that would be way too difficult to be able to do at the scale that we're working on right now. I don't think it's difficult, but I, I just needed to know what it was in there. Thank you. I'm not sure if you heard the mayor at the very end. He says he didn't think it's too difficult to do. Um, your thoughts on this particular clip? Oh, I think in, if you watched last week on Citizen Mike, you and Chairman Cervoni did it, this, it arrived at the same number. I th- was it four mils? About, yeah. Uh, so I, well, that, that reflects to your point. They weren't looking at that. This is not about cost savings. This is not about how much or how much it's going to cost. It's, it's, so that just feeds to your point. So what the mayor was talking about is uh, if you have to spend, I'm making up the number now, about $77 million, and it has to go out for bonding, meaning you're borrowing $77 million, there's a principal and interest payment to make, and consultants in your you know, great wisdom and trying to you know, be fair and straight with the Board of Ed and talk about savings and the best alternatives, and have you even considered that? This is a basic component of any, in my view, of a consultant's report. Uh, if you're going to measure savings, include the principal and interest, the mayor agrees. And they said, no, you know, it's not, you know, we don't do that. And maybe the worst thing, and they said, that's too difficult. Seriously? How can you, how can you have faith and confidence in a consultant that says, well, you know, I, I can't compute the principal interest on this. Well, they, maybe they should have hired another consultant to do that part of the pro- job. Because you said there's a consultant that can do it. Maybe there's a special consultant who just does mill rate projections yeah, but and bonding. But, uh, I'm kidding. Okay. So we've got a little bit of time left. Let's change subjects radically. Okay. Community pool. That has been a work in progress for um, a, a long time. Um, community pool has... 
Well, it needs a lot of work. Um, its popularity has gone down, and so there's been a lot of talk about let's do something. And I'm going to take this now. I'm going to start this story from an article in the Record Journal, September 26, 2018. Uh, the town council reacted favorably Tuesday evening to a proposed reno renovation of the community pool property with an estimated price tag of $4.5 million to $6 million. Sign me up, said Councillor Chris Shortell, that's you. Sign me up if we ever actually go forward with this. I don't want a nickel and dime it. I feel, I feel like if we're going to do it, let's go all in. Town officials have been considering the future of the 7.1-acre uh, pool property uh, on North Main Street Extension because of growing maintenance costs and fluctuating yet overall declining pool attendance in recent years. The pool was last renovated about uh, 20 years ago. Um, with the help of John Golak, the Park and Rec Department, and through the uh, Park and Rec's uh, new website, I was able to get an image of the latest iteration of what the plan may look like. So I want to get that on the screen first. It's the long shot, Bruce, of Community Pool. Three, two, there we go. Um, we're going to have a slightly closer up view, but you can see there, and we're going to keep this on the screen for a, a good long time. There's the main pool, a lap pool, a splash pad, a picnic area, a volleyball court, a seasonal pavilion, uh, parking. Um, it, it, looks, it looks really nice. And I, I understand that the Park and Rec Commission and the Park Department has been traveling you know, across the state to try to get ideas of what other towns are doing. Um, uh, it, it, it was pretty thoroughly researched, and they came up with a concept to make this not only a pool, but a park-like hmm. experience. And again, that's the latest iteration. I mean, it's subject to design and redesign and revision, so maybe we consider that a, a first rough draft. What is the latest, though, that um, the town the town has to um, has to offer? Bruce, let's go to the next slide. It's a little closer view of it. Um, we've cut out some of the um, some of the um, language, the legend on the on the side, and get a better look. And Chris, I want to get your reaction to all this. Okay, Bruce, let's take that down and see what Chris has to say. We're I, all in. I am all in. You I know, am too. You I know what? Too. Sometimes <laughs> th there is a a tendency when you're up there to give the sort of middle of the road keep all your options open don't annoy anybody answer and i just you know maybe i was a little too over the top in my endorsement of we do plan. this on the citizen mike show we go over the top right we go I mean, well if tonight, we, today tonight we do uh, i mean you man, betcha, baby it's, you betcha yeah. what's the point you know you... but you gotta but, but i just felt like with this i wanted to provoke a response because i felt like you too. I knew how I knew how I felt, and and I've had moments since that meeting where I've questioned: Should I have really been so vocally supportive? Because now, as long as I'm up there, for however many years I'm up there, I'm, I've set myself up that if I'm ever against anything, people are going to say, "Oh, but you were for the six million dollar pool, or the four and a half million dollar pool, depending on what it is." Um, but at the end of the day, my own personality as a counselor, as you know, I, I'm very situational. I am not an ideologue. I don't. I, I don't deal in absolutes. I don't never do want that something. I look at every situation, and this is one where I, we use the pool. It's been in town for 50 years, and I think it could be a destination. I know we have, some, we have children who are younger. We've driven to Montville. We've driven to East Haven to their splash pad. We've driven all over. People will come to Wallingford if it's, this is done right, and I think that the Park and Rec Commission did an excellent job with this. And yeah, they loaded up the design. I, so would I. They put it. They, they went all in. And one of the mayor's directives, which was smart, was let's make this as much of a year-round facility or nine-month facility as we can. And that's why you see things like a park in back and some of the other stuff. I don't know what'll make it out of that if this goes forward, but I thought that they did an excellent job. And I think this we can do this. We're lucky that we can do this. But we can do this without breaking the bank. And 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 my only other thing is what I said at, at not the meeting on the uh, the most recent meeting you quoted. Uh, we we've had several meetings on this, but I said this I think a year ago. What I don't want is to drive by that property for the next thirty years with a padlock on the gate, and we don't do anything with it because it was too expensive and this and that. So. Um, I am, while I'm for the pool, look, if the administration wants to give me a strategic alternative to that property, use of that property, uh, I don't know, a lacrosse field, just a splash pad, I'm, I'm receptive and I'm open to that, a cheaper alternative. They have not come forward with, no one has come forward with any other alternative for that property except we close it or we don't. So that's, so yes, I'm, I'm all in. 
And I think uh, I said on the last show I was too, and I was trying to get get Ralph and Vinnie Cervoni to go all in, and uh, and I was more enthusiastic I think than they were. I think uh, Ralph was trying to get the price down or something. I said, oh, right. do it right. Come on. Right. Um, what I want to do is um, change topics. Um, Ralph and I and guests on future shows, we're going to continue the discussion of Community Pool because there's more to talk about. Sure. But we only have about five minutes left. Um, and I want to get your views on the brother's property purchase, okay. where you see us going with that and, and why. Um, I, I just want to read a couple sentences from the record journal to set the table. Everyone's on mm -hmm. the same page factually. Um, this goes back to October 13, 2018. The town purchased the brother's restaurant property on North Cherry Street Saturday in a foreclosure auction held on the property. The building at 33 North Cherry was appraised at 524, 524,000, and the land was appraised at 87,400. The town purchased the property at 411,000, skipping down the article. In an August letter to the council, uh, Mayor Dickinson said, acquiring the property would support the new town center zone, incentive housing zone, and other transit-oriented projects. Your thoughts on the purchase and what's the ultimate use if you had your way? Well, I think I think we have to remember with this property that that, that we have to understand what is the end game here. Uh, the end game on your on your last show was a great show. Uh, Jamie Hine talked about you know he doesn't want to see a parking lot there, and I understand that. But that's not that wasn't the choice. The choice was don't buy it, and it sits the way it is. This is my same argument with the pool. It sits the way it is for the next thirty years. It sits there as a as an eyesore, as a, maybe another restaurant, or maybe it's some other type of uh, facility, someone else goes in there, and it never gets developed. Nothing changes. So that was what I think the council, all we all kind of agreed on, most of us did, I think. Um, the plant, now I think with the mayor, the mayor is, is um, I don't, I don't want to I don't want to speak for the mayor, and I can't speak for the mayor, but I think the mayor is a little bit uh, skeptical because of the state situation about how much any of our incentives can do, but I think he's willing to try. So I think the goal is we buy it, we, we, we parcel it, we, we combine it with the parking lot that we do own. We make a parking lot. Maybe someone approaches us during this process. Maybe it's t two years from now. Maybe it's three years from now. And they say, can we buy this parcel from you? And we, we entertain that. And hopefully it works out. But in the meantime, I don't see why a parking lot there is the worst thing. It could, I think it could help some of the empty storefronts. On as an interim Act, solution. As an interim solution. But, but I'm not going to sit here and say, if that's a parking lot for 30 years, to that's me, what I'm getting at. that's preferable than it's sitting there the way it is now for 30 years. And that but was is, the choice. Is it okay with you that it's a parking lot for 30 years? Yes. If that's what, yes. I, that's not my first choice, but but I'm not gonna. I no, wouldn't. I want your, we want your first choice. What my would you first choice to do? is that it gets developed. Is that a developer comes in, and 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 we package it with the parking lot that we already own, that property by the train station, the old train station, and it gets developed, and some kind of mixed use property goes in. I know you've talked about Eastern Mountain Sports with a rooftop cafe, Talbots, Eastern Mountain Talbots, Sports, yeah, absolutely, uh, anything. Yeah. I would love to see that. I and who knows, developers. You've heard it here on the Citizen Mike Show. If you want to make an offer to the town, <laughs> that's right. Chris Sartell will be happy to meet an executive session <laughs> and entertain your offer. Fair? Not fair. I'm well, just, what? Not, what did I go wrong? I was trying. I was I try Why wasn't that fair? I think Councilor Letourneau has already beat me to that. Like, Councilor, he's all over this. His Jeez, shop is I, down there. I he thought is... that's exactly what you said. Yeah. So um, I thought about my comments on the on the last uh, episode of the Susan Mike Show, and um, I made those because I was leaning towards uh, green space, some sort of a park, a little bit of parking, mm -hmm. um, some sort of a splash pad and a fountain, and I'm sticking with that. The more I think about it, the more that's what I want to do, and we could we could do it without waiting around for a developer or anything else. And if, it, if it's well done, it becomes somewhat of a destination. It brings foot traffic down there. Foot traffic means more successful businesses, uh, a more desirable place to live. There are many ways to, to do the economic development play. And, and, and having green, green space and a park and improving, improving the attractiveness of a spot downtown is in its own way an economic development play. That's where I'm leaning to that, but you know that'll never happen, ever. That wouldn't be hard. I, I wouldn't be totally against that either. I'm all about aquatics. I mean, I want to build Whoa. pools. I mean, come on. I'm... Kids, you know, running around on a splash pad. I mean, doesn't that yeah. make your heart melt? It, it, I mean, I. I don't know in if the it makes heat it of melt. August. In the heat of August, when when the pool's closed. 
We didn't even get to that. We didn't even get to that. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to continue this discussion on another Citizen Mike show. We have run out of time, but thanks for coming on again. We appreciate it. There's a ton of stuff to talk about, and I appreciate your being my uh, my uh, my my list my my ear as I vent on this what I consider to be an outrageous process being currently followed by the board of it. Thanks for watching the Citizen Mike show. We're here on Wednesdays, but you can see the Citizen Mike show Thursdays, Fridays. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 9 o'clock on WPAA. It goes up on YouTube after a couple of days. On YouTube, search the Citizen Mike Wallingford channel. Contact me if you want me to send you a direct email link. Be happy to do it. Thanks to Chris Shortell for coming on again. And thank you. Good night, everybody.